Uh, I think you should add that I'm probably the oldest person in this room. So I want to tell you about a new concept, which we call just right consistency, which is basically the idea that you need to reconcile applications with databases, not design each one independently. So what we want is your data to be as available as possible. Sometimes it's not possible, but as available as possible. Um, but as consistent as it needs to be for your application to be correct. And the, this, your application, that's the top level uh, goal, to make your application correct. So uh, I, don't, I probably don't have to convince you that data is important, databases are important, and that modern uh, applications need to st store their data uh, all over the world. So uh, you have a drawing of a distributed database with uh, uh, your data is located as close as possible to your users, and your application logic is also close to the data. What this brings you with respect to, of course, a centralized system is fault tolerance, because you have replicas. Uh, it gives you faster reads, because you can always get your data from close by. Um, and uh, the problem is, of course, if you have an update, then if you do an update in one place, you have to propagate it everywhere. And the problem of what happens when you do updates is called the, the consistency problem. And there's a well-known theorem called the CAP theorem that tells you you have to choose. You can either, because your network is imperfect, it will always uh, fail, it will always partition, uh, you have to choose between keeping your data strong and consistent on the one hand, or keeping your data available but you can't get both. So uh, the two um, main approaches, uh, I'm simplifying everything uh, a lot, but basically there are two camps. One is the strong consistency camp, um, uh, like the, the Google Spanner uh, database. The idea is every update is gonna be synchronous. Every, you all, before you update something, you ask everybody, is, is this okay? Okay, so you ask for permission. So you have, a, uh, you have to call and return basically everybody. Um, this is gonna cost you time because you have to do this uh, round trip and you have to wait. So your, uh, your hardware is, is not being used very efficiently. Um, it's consistent. The, the, the big thing is that for, from the application perspective, this is the same model as your centralized model. So if your application is correct in a centralized system, it will remain correct in this distributed system. So that's uh, absolutely great. Uh, but of course, the problem is, if you have a partition, well, you can't ask for permission anymore, and you're stuck, okay? So your data is not available. You cannot do your updates. You're stuck, okay? So, the op so, the, so this is like Google Spanner and Azure, et cetera, others. Um, uh, the sort of the opposite extreme is what's called eventual co consistency. So here you do completely the opposite. You don't ask for permission. You just do your update, and you propagate your update whenever you can, okay, in the background. So your update is really fast because you don't have to ask for permission. It's, it's as fast as your reads because it's right there, local. And if there's a partition, well, who cares, right? Because it doesn't change anything from the application perspective. You're still doing your one-sided update, and you're still propagating you know, whenever the partition goes away. Okay? So, at that, so for, for performance, it's great. Everything is much faster. Uh, it's it's uh, potentially much cheaper, because you're using your hardware better. But of course, you have anomalies. What happens now if you know, somebody in Asia does an update to your, you know, salary database, and at the same time, somebody in the US is doing a, uh, an update to the same salary database, what do you do, okay? Um, so the semantics are really unclear, and many things can go wrong, okay? So uh, the, the, the um, you know, like Cassandra is one of the databases that does this. Uh, Azure actually gives you the choice between strong and, and, and weak consistency. But that's not really helpful, because you still have to choose, and the programmer doesn't really know what's right. Okay? So I'm going to try to, 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 to answer that question, what's right for your application? And I'll take the example of a specific application, which is called FMK, which is modeled after the uh, Dutch he uh, healthcare network, uh, because we were working with the people who were doing that. Um, 
So simplifying a lot, um, the main data structure of interest here is the prescription. And what can you do? Well, you can create a prescription, and the prescription contains the, you know, the doctor, the, the, uh, the name of the patient, the, ph the pharmacy, and it's also linked by the patient object, the pharmacy object, and the doctor object. And once you have created a prescription, you can add medicines to the, you, the doctor, can add medicines to this prescription, and of course you can read the contents of the prescription, and then you can take your prescription, go to a pharmacy, and ask the pharmacy, give me one box of this, or two boxes of that, okay? And if that matches your prescription, the pharmacy will give it to you, okay? Now, what does it mean for this application to be correct? There's some obvious invariants in there, things that, you know, statements that you want to be true about this application. Okay, so, for instance, you want to be, sh you want to be sure that when, uh, say, uh, there's a reference to a prescription from your patient or from your doctor, that prescription actually exists. It's called referential integrity. Okay, the other thing you want to be sure is that if, you know, the doctor points to the prescription, the prescription exists, it's also true for the patient and the pharmacy, right? So you get all of them, all of these pointers, not just one. And finally, you want to make sure that uh, the pharmacy doesn't over-deliver, right? So if I'm allowed two boxes of Cosetin, I'm not going to get three, right? Um, so it's pretty clear how you would want, how you do this in a centralized sequential system. How, now what happens if you want an available system that is replicated across their whole country, lots of little databases with this information, and now the capability that somebody will go to the pharmacy with, with this prescription, and an accomplice will go to another pharmacy with the same prescription, what happens? Okay. So you want to maintain these invariants. The thing is that strong consistency is much more than you need, as I will explain in a minute, and eventually, consistency is much too weak, okay? So, um, so th basically, we all, we all know that one size does not fit well. You know, all different applications have different needs. I mean, clearly, a social network is different from a bank. Okay. So, the idea is we want, we want to start from these invariants, right? These statements about what is correct, and then work our way down to the uh, consistency. But it turns out that we, don't often, we usually don't know these invariants, right? I told you what the invariants are for this FM key application, but it's, it's really very annoying to have to tease them out. So here I'm going to ask you to do a leap of faith and say, okay, let's forget about the invariants themselves. Let's look at the code, right? The, the, is the sequential code already has to maintain these invariants. So it does things. It has patterns in there that are, are, that are going to maintain the invariants. And the idea is now is we're going to maintain these invariants. Yeah, sorry, we're going to maintain these patterns. Not, we don't necessarily need to know the, the, uh, the, in, the um, invariants themselves, just the patterns. Okay? And we're going to look at which patterns can be maintained without synchronization, and therefore will be available, uh, even under partition, and those that actually really need uh, synchronization. So, um, so this is going to give us the, the best possible mix of availability and performance for my application. So one of the things we need is the capability to be able to uh, do concurrent updates. Um, so uh, as, as Sylvain mentioned, we invented this thing called CRDTs. I will not explain in, in, in great detail what a CRDT is, but basically CRDTs is the idea that uh, instead of doing assignments, because assignments, you need, you need, a total, you need a strong consistency for assignments to work properly, Instead of doing assignments, we're going to do uh, incremental updates that can be merged. Right? So in the case, for instance, of, of counting medication, uh, you, know, um, you can have one doctor that is adding, you know, increasing the count of medication, and at the same time, his uh, assistant is also increasing the count of medication. But those two can be merged because they're commutative, commutative updates. Um, and we designed uh, lots of data structures that have this uh, property sets and registers and lists and other things. And so, for instance, in the, uh, in the FMK application, we can replace all the sort of standard data, data types with CRDT data types. Okay, now, patterns, okay? So one of the patterns 
that you find in, in sequential code is simply ordering things in, in some order. So for instance, first you create the, um, the prescription and you fill it, and then you set the pointers from the, um, from the doctor and patient objects to the, um, uh, to the prescription, right? And it's because you do the things in the right order that you maintain this referential integrity invariant. And if your database is, uh, doesn't, ma doesn't, doesn't um, make these events visible in the right order, you're screwed. Okay? And it turns out that, well, eventual, con eventual consistency um, doesn't maintain this order. And actually, even some strongly consistent databases don't maintain this order. What you need is what's called causal consistency. And again, there's an illustration of how causal consistency works. But I'll skip that in the interest of time. Just it, 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 it's a way of ensuring that events always arrive in the order that's expected, and you never see inversions. So, so and, and, and oh, what I need to say, which is most important, is the last line. This is compatible with AP. You can do this in an available way. You don't need to synchronize to ensure uh, causal consistency. And therefore, you don't need to synchronize in order to do referential integrity. Second pattern is a joint update. I'm, I'm sure you're all very familiar with this. Uh, you know, basically, it's a transaction. You want uh, all three of these pointers to be updated or none. Right? So before it happens, nothing is there. And after it happens, they're, they're all there. So you want some kind of all or nothing update. Not a full asset transaction, just the all or nothing property. And again, um, you know, eventual consistency doesn't give you this guarantee. And strong consistency is much more than you need. Just to put two things together, you don't need strong consistency. You just need to send them in the, in, in, in the, uh, together. So again, this is uh, all or nothing is a property you can get uh, while still maintaining availability. And the third pattern is testing a precondition. Now this one is more, is more tricky. So uh, take the example of, of going to the pharmacy and processing the prescription, right? I'm, Bob is allowed to have two boxes of Cosetin, right? He says, okay, give me one box. Fine, you have one box left. If you went to the pharmacy and asked for three, you would say, no, I have to test, you know, I'm gonna test the amount you're asking for, three, against the count that is in the prescription, two, right? And it doesn't satisfy the precondition that the count has to be greater or equal to the, what you're asking for, okay? So you say no, okay? So, even in the sequential code, you have this precondition test uh, in order to maintain the invariant that basically the invariant here is that the uh, medication count never goes negative, right? So you have this precondition update. Now what happens if you have a concurrent update? So um, here we have a, a, an illustration of the sort of timeline. Uh, you know, in the top line, you have one replica, bottom line, another replica. On the first, the first line, you go to the pharmacy, Bob goes to the pharmacy, count is initial, initially two, he asks for one, okay? Is two greater than one? Yes, okay, then I can uh, do the subtraction, right? And I propagate the subtraction to the other uh, replicas, and at the end, everybody agrees it's one, which is fine because I've maintained the invariant that count is positive. Now, if there's a concurrent update, what happens? Well, actually, Sometimes it's fine, right? If the concurrent update is something, somebody increasing the medication count, no problem, right? So there's no reason to do strong consistency in this case. There's no reason to synchronize in this case. And you can actually, you can actually check this statically just by looking at the code that this is technically what, we, what we're saying here is that the precondition is stable. The precondition here, count greater than one, um, is not gonna be negated by the concurrent update so we're okay, right? And in that case, it's fine to do concurrent updates. Um, but n now let's look at another example. Same thing, Bob asked for one uh, box of Cosetin, but concurrently, you know, his, his evil accomplice, uh, Moriarty, goes to another pharmacy and says, I want two boxes of Cosetin, right? And, you know, the pharmacy, just looking locally at the database, will say, that's fine, right? Two is, greater, two is greater or equal to two, so I'm fine. And we'll do the subtraction. And in the end, uh, you know, subtract one, plus, plus one and two from two, well, uh, you get minus one, 
and you've violated your invariant. What happened here? What happened is that the precondition up there that we checked, the count greater or equal to one, now has been negated by the concurrent update. So that precondition is not stable. And again, I can, look, I can find this out just by looking at the source code. Right? So with, with some static analysis, I can tell which preconditions are stable and which are not. Right? If they're stable, concurrency is fine. Right? I don't need, uh, I, I, and I can, I can run these uh, updates in an AP manner. And I only need to resort to synchronization and to be non-available, of course, if uh, it's, a, it's an unstable precondition. So to summarize, um, I've been trying to explain to you a methodology for adapting consistency to application uh, requirements. Okay? And the, the application requirements are invariants, but I don't always know these invariants. However, I do know the patterns that are in the code. And I've identified three important patterns. One is uh, ordered updates, and causal consistency takes care of that in an AP manner. Um, all or nothing updates, I can do that in, in an AP manner. And can, can, the, the invariants that are sensitive to cap, right, which are these uh, preconditioned tests, well, if they're stable, it's still OK. okay. Um, and finally, I'd like to conclude with telling you about Antidote, which is uh, a database that we've developed, open source data, database that we've developed in these two uh, European projects, um, which supports CRDTs and supports the, 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 the right model for, um, uh, for this just right consistency approach. And uh, I guess I'm done. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.